on my name, yeah, yeah. you all on my lane, hey, yeah. you ain't overlooked, yeah, yeah. so get out the way, hey, yeah. I gave you the book, what, what? I gave you the game, uh, the boy got a cook, yeah, yeah. the boy got a flame, yeah. serving in the kitchen like a Nino, plenty bitchin' whipping different flavors like a bistro, kick it, dip it, flip it, keep it hunting like a C-note, switch it, keep it pimping every single place that he go, I got it, Nathan got the flame, Nathan got the flame, boy you know the name, get up out the way, Nathan got the flame, Nathan got the flame Stay up by the kitchen if you ain't the one that's whipping, huh? Hey, yo, Nathan, man, cook them boys up something real quick, man What's going on, YouTube? And welcome back to my channel Now, today we got the most amazing beef tips um, Braised beef tips So, first thing we're gonna do is get our garlic together And we're gonna mince this down We're gonna chop up the garlic and then add some salt to it And just go ahead and mince it down with your knife And the reason you're doing this is to kind of break the garlic down as well as release some of those natural oils in the garlic and this is going to give you that real intense flavor of garlic that's going to go well with these beef tips so once you get the garlic chopped down go ahead and cut your onion up and um you just want to um julienne this onion but you can cut it any kind of way because you're going to uh, pretty much braise this beef, these beef, beef tips down so much that the onion is pretty much going to disintegrate. So you're not going to see onions at the finished product. So cut the onion any way you want it. I julienne mine. And once you get that onion julienne, go ahead and put some oil into a pan. Make that make sure that's the oil with a high smoke point, like some canola oil or grapeseed oil, even avocado oil. And once you get the oil in the pan and it's ripping hot, go ahead and add your beef tips in. And once you add your beef tips in, you're going to let these things go um, on one side without even touching them. So try not to disturb them. And then we're going to season them up with some garlic powder or granulated garlic. Then we got some granulated onion. You know how I do my thing. Granulated garlic, granulated onion. It go in everything. <laughs> and then we got some uh, lorries just to give us that savory note, that seasoned salt note. And um, that's the three seasonings I put on my beef. And once you go on one side for about four minutes, go ahead and stir it up. And you want to try to get the other side as well. Um, really and truly, you want to brown all sides of the beef. But uh, with a braise like this, it's going to cook so long that you really don't have to. But get some good color on there uh, creates caramelization, which creates flavor. So you give, it gives you a more depth of flavor. But if you skip this part, um, it won't be too detrimental to the last part of the dish. But once you get those um, beef brown, those beef tips brown, go ahead and add your onions in. And remember, we got that garlic, but we're going to add it in later because we do not want to burn the garlic. Uh, burnt garlic will give you so many bitter notes and it'll ruin the dish. So I always remember that. Uh, but we're going in with our onions and we're going to let these things cook down um, until um, they're translucent. And, you know, to help the onions out, we're going to throw a little salt in there just to draw some of the moisture out of the onions. And that moisture is going to go down there with the beef and the beef jus with the onions. When we add our flour to it, it's going to create uh, the most wonderful roux. And this is not a tr uh, traditional roux uh, by any sense because we're using the beef fat and the onion drippings to make this roux. But it's going to be flavor town. Let me tell you that. So go ahead and get those onions kind of mixed up in a bunch. And when you get those onions mixed up, um, go ahead and pop a top on there just to help the onions translute a little bit more, you know, and dry out more moisture. But you didn't want your moisture to evaporate. So uh, that's another reason why you went on with that lid, because like I said, you want to use that beef jus and that onion juice um, with the flour to make your roux. So. Um, yeah, put a top on there just so your your liquid don't evaporate because you want that because I said it'll create that really good depth of flavor and equals it to uh, flavor town. So once you go on with two tablespoons of flour, go ahead and mix that flour into this beef and onion mixture. And you want to kind of cook that raw taste out of the flour. So uh, you're going to let this go for a little while because um, that raw taste in that flour will be horrible in a finished dish. So go ahead and make sure every piece of white flour has touched the pan and it has cooked a little bit. Uh, it's nothing more worse than, well, nothing worse than uh, raw flour taste in the dish. But once you get that flour all cooked out, now it's time to add our garlic and we're gonna go in with our garlic and mix that up. And you're gonna cook this garlic for maybe about a minute. Um, you're gonna uh, smell your beef tips get very fragrant with garlic and that's how you know 
hey, it's the end of cooking this garlic. You don't want to burn it. And then you're going to go in and start adding your liquid. But cook that garlic in there for at least one minute. But after one minute, you know, you're going to go ahead and add your liquid. And what I'm using here is some unsalted beef broth. Um, you can use beef stock. But um, I'm starting to use stuff that you guys can um, get get at the store. Because I know a lot of people say, we don't make our stocks from scratch. Uh, you need to show recipes where um, you're using products we're familiar with. So, um, like I said, you can use the store-bought beef broth or beef stock, but make sure it's unsalted if possible. But I'm going in with the whole container of this beef stock or beef broth. Uh, I'm just going in in halves. So, the first one, we're going in half, and then we're going to cook it down a little bit. And when you see that gravy starting to thicken up, you're going to go in immediately with the second half. Uh, make sure you're going with halves because it just developed that gravy a lot better than pouring it all in at once and waiting on everything to come together at once. So once you get all that beef broth in there, you're going to stir it in there and mix it up, bring it to a boil. Look at, and that's a, that's a pretty good boil. It's not a crazy boil, but it's a pretty good boil. And once you bring it to a boil, you're going to pop a top on there and immediately drop it down to a simmer. And we're going to let this thing go for four hours. Um, you you want to make sure that top is on because you do not want it to evaporate. Because if it evaporates a lot, it'll concentrate those flavors and it'll begin to get salty. So make sure you keep that top on there so it will not evaporate and those... Um, beef tips will come together perfect and once they're ready you're going to go ahead and plate this thing up and i cooked some regular old white rice and just added some parsley to it um and some salt so uh, I, don't, I don't think you need help on cooking white rice but you're going to go ahead and plate it up and then uh, add that gravy to it and put as much gravy on there as possible because this thing is pretty much delicious and this is not like the prettiest plate but i think this dish will relate more to the demographic that I cook for. Um, it's really good homey dish and it's perfect the way it is. It don't need to be all pretty, but we did add a touch of parsley just for color. Um, but there you have it, man, the most amazing beef tips and gravy. Thank you for checking this video out. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Beef tips and gravy from the bistro. I'm out.